In this video, we'll be taking a look at my robotic actuator that I've designed and 3D printed here. So this is actually my fifth version that I've designed of an actuator. And this is my fourth version that I've actually gone through and made. One of the versions I didn't make, but I designed. So this is generation three, version five. Uh, yeah, I've come a long way and I think I have it down. So the purpose of this actuator is to, of course, be used with robotics projects. More specifically, a quadruped robot, and that's what I want to design uh, and build next. So, just some special features of the actuator. It uses one of these motors. It's a 5010-350 kV motor. And so, uh, it, it spins very fast. These are supposed to be used for drones and quadrocopters. Um, not too much torque. It, it is higher than, it, it's high for its size, but not enough to be used for like a quadruped robot. And so uh, this is why I have a three-stage planetary gear set in here. That's what actually takes up most of the space. So three stages and uh, yeah, it produces a lot of torque. The total gear reduction is 125 to one. So each stage is a five to one with a total of 125 to one. So we can take a, some close, a closer look at the diameter and the dimensions of the actuator. So height, uh, about 2.7 inches. Let me make sure my caliper is calibrated properly. Yep, so around 2.75 inches tall. And then diameter, ooh, maybe I'll use my measuring tape for this. Oh no, I'll just actually do it like this. Diameter is close to four inches, so about 3.9 and a little bit of change. So yeah, it's, it's fairly small compared to my other actuator designs, which I'll show next. But anyway, the motor is down here and then we have all the gear stuff here. Uh, just some more stuff in the motor. We have a deep groove ball bearing in there that drives the output shaft. And then I'm just using M3 machine screws for this. And then they can easily be just taken off. There's only four on top and bottom. And then of course the four in the middle to hold the uh, output shaft. Um, Mounting screws. So we have two sets. So one is on the bottom and then one is on the top. So the ones on the bottom are used if you want to just hold it from the back, right? And the ones on the top, these are for a motor encoder if you want to use it just on the actuator. So this is what the motor encoder is. This is also 3D printed, but the motor encoder is actually in there. It's an AS5600 motor encoder, if I'm not wrong, an absolute motor encoder. So it mounts on here and then you put the screws through there and then when you have like a servo arm that I've made and you put that on there as you can see I already have a magnet there so the motor encoder is on top of the magnet directly on top of the magnet so then you can program it to move for a specific amount of degrees or however you want it to move the only problem with having the motor encoder on top of here like this is that you can't go 360 degrees so it becomes more of a servo rather than an actuator so you have a limit um i believe it's about 270 degrees that you can turn up to uh so yeah the, the other 90 degrees you can't go through because of um this is blocking it it's in its way um besides that uh that's pretty much the basics of this motor encoder the motor driver is not in it. That's why you have uh, these bullet connectors on here. So I'm actually using this motor driver. I believe it's called a Rio Rand, and this is hall less, so you don't have to have hall effect sensors with this one. Um, yeah, so I'm just using this. It, it's worked pretty well. And to power everything, I'm using a 22.2 volt lipo battery. And so with this, using this, I should get around uh, 60 RPM max with this, which is not bad. I don't need too, too much speed. I'm more concerned with torque. And so speaking of torque, 
real quick, we can talk about the back drivability. So this is fairly back drivable. Uh, and I, the reason I say fairly is because, again, it does have a high gear reduction. And so it's not completely back drivable, which is preferred with quadrupeds and a lot of robots. But for me, I'm more concerned with torque because I see that as being a bigger problem than back drivability. So I can show you the back drivability real quick. It does require a little bit of force, but it is back drivable. All right, so that's screwed on. The servo arm is screwed on. And so I can move it, but it is a little bit of force. You can hear all the gears coming. That's another thing too. This thing is quite loud. Uh, yeah, so if, if you're looking for something that's not too noisy, this is definitely not it. So let me just take this off. So with this output shaft, you have a bunch of different options with attachments and stuff. So like I just made this basic servo arm. Um, I also use this to do some testing for torque to see how much torque I could get out of this. And that's why there's a hole there. So this is about 6.5 inches from the center to here. Six inches exact. Six inches exact from the center to the center there. And so with this, if I remember the numbers correctly, I should get around... Uh, Close to five newton meters torque max or not max close to five on average and then max i've gotten around seven newton meters um that's not the exact number but it's close to seven it's like seven point something but yeah th those are the, the numbers so it can lift quite a bit um i was able to lift i believe it was three about maybe like three kilograms um on average and then max close to four ish so it is quite powerful let's talk about weight so i have my scale here so 394 grams fairly light so just about 0.3 kilograms not too heavy all right so now for the big the most important thing is to compare these to my previous actuators so like i mentioned before this is version 5 that i've actually gone ahead and built and then version 4 of what i've um sorry rat sorry version 5 of the ones that i designed and version 4 of the ones i've actually gone to build so I'll start off with version 1 so this is version one. This uses a DC motor. Uh, this this did not work very well at all. Um, the wires aren't really arranged, it's just everywhere. Uh, yeah, I didn't really like this one. I guess the only good thing with this one is that it's all in one. So the motor driver is actually in here with the motors and the gears. I don't remember the exact gear ratio of this one but it wasn't powerful at all. It couldn't lift anything. So this is version one. Version two, this is version two. This was a little bit better. Uh, still not perfect though, not at the uh, efficiency that I wanted it to be. So this uses a stepper motor um, and it had a nine to one gear ratio and this used a belt and pulley system. So this is very, this is highly back drivable. So I can just turn it without having like a servo arm or anything. So that's the perks with this one. This one also has the stepper driver, uh, stepper motor driver inside it as well. So you just have to plug this up to an Arduino or whatever microcontroller you're using, which is good. All right. 
So this is version four. Um, version, it's not version three because version three I didn't actually make. This is version four. And version four is very similar to version five here, but there are some differences that makes version five a lot better. This one is also an all-in-one, meaning that uh, everything is inside it. I've already taken out the motor, so that's why you can't see it from the bottom here, from the little fan ducts. But um, this one, yes, is an all-in-one. So this one uses an ESC, it doesn't use a motor driver. Um, and I use that to program with Arduino. I was having a lot of problems with it. And I think it's because of I'm using an ESC, which is mostly for like flying planes and stuff, um, not an actual driver. So I was having a lot of problems with that. Also, I was using an optical encoder. So I had 3D printed a little wheel with a bunch of holes inside it. And I used this little optical Arduino optical encoder to kind of like sense uh, the, the, the degrees that it's turned. And that didn't work too well at all. Um, it, it wasn't absolute. So I, every time I turned off the Arduino and turned it back on, it didn't know its exact position. Which is why I added a Hall Effect sensor to this one. And I also had trouble with that one, with the interrupt, and it was just all a big mess. Um, and I also didn't like how it wasn't perfectly circular, because this is where all the wires go through. From the top here, where the optical encoder is, and the, uh, uh, the, the Hall Effect sensor is to the bottom there, where all the other electronics is. The only good thing with this one is that uh, this also has a 125 to 1 gear ratio, so high torque probably the same amount of torque as version 5 the only uh it also like i mentioned before it's an all-in-one so i just plug in um cables in here and then plug it into the arduino so that was good so then version 5 the main difference between these two like i mentioned this uses an absolute encoder this is an all-in-one this is not an all-in-one so i have to plug this into a motor driver but uh size definitely this one is slightly smaller, and this is definitely a lot heavier. So we can actually weigh this one. Maybe not too much heavier, but it is definitely heavier. So that, like I said, this doesn't have the actual motor inside, so this is not all the weight. So I'll add the motor on top so we can see a true estimate. So around 536 grams. So it is heavier than this which is only only about 400 so another 100 something grams added onto that one for the exact same amount of torque all right so that's pretty much um th this actuator uh it's very efficient and i've actually gone ahead and made three of them so i'm going to be making like i mentioned a quadruped robot and so I needed three to make just one leg assembly so if you are familiar with the MIT cheetah or pretty much most quadruped robots it's that they have this sort of same configuration where this is like the hip joint and then this moves the upper leg and this moves the lower leg so that's pretty much how it's going to look uh, minus the actual leg I haven't got that to that yet but that's what i'm designing now and uh yeah i'll be 3d printing that and using these actuators to make it soon all right time for a quick test of the actuator so i'm going to run two tests one is just going to have it spin freely as it is and then the other is going to have this servo arm that i've designed and 3d printed on it and it's going to spin with this on it and it'll kind of show the speed a little bit better so the actuator is actually or rather the motor driver and the actuator are connected now so this is the motor driver and then we have our 22.2 lipo battery um supplying i believe it's five amps of current so this is getting quite a little bit of current um i'm hoping with any of my robotics projects i'm going to use two of these so that'll uh and, and i'm going to wire them in parallel so that'll mean i should have around like 10 amps all right so let's turn it on and so i should mention i'm um, using the potentiometer built in onto the motor driver and so what i just showed was about half of its speed i'll go all the way now All right, 
So that was the motor, the actuator spinning. So now I'm gonna mount on the servo arm. And then I'll run it with this on. So all I have to do is just screw in all of these 3M or M3 screws, machine screws, and then it should be good to go. The good thing with this actuator is that there are standoffs inside the output shaft, so you can pretty much screw in any attachment that you have on it. All right, so this is on. All right, so now I'm going to turn it again with the servo arm on. And the good thing with this motor driver is that I can also switch the direction, which is good for programming as well. That way I can move things back and forth, right? So I've already hooked on a switch to change the direction. And so if I turn it on now, it should spin in the opposite direction. So we're spinning counterclockwise now. And if I press the switch again, it should now spin clockwise again. Change the direction. All right. And so, yep, that's about it. The driver also has a brake on it, a brake pin. So you can put a switch on it like this with the direction um, pin and you can have it brake, but that doesn't really do much for this actuator since uh, it is just kind of barely that drivable. It's a good bit that, that drivable, but um, I don't think the brake would do too much. And yeah, so here we have it.